me hot. Okay, so Kung Fu Panda. Oh, we going mm. we going Panda. Panda now. Mm, Nebby, talk about the panda. You already know the panda. Panda, panda, panda. Everybody knows Kung Fu Fry. Hey, here's the song, yeah, I'm like, panda, panda, panda. It's going to be fine if you... <laughs> Anyways, uh, this panda, wow, something, man, like, it really takes you to the whole world of Kung Fu Panda, and, uh, you know, they really got some cool voice actors, you know, they got Jackie Chan as the monkey, even though the monkey doesn't talk that much, and, uh, you know, it's, it's this movie has all the emotions, you know, it's like, you're always rooting for the panda, you know, he, he came from the bottom, he, he had a hard time even getting in to, like, the ceremony, and then, you know, all of a sudden, he's the Kung Fu master, and you really, uh, the villains are always fine in these movies, you know, the total is five. I can't really say anything about it, this movie. It's amazing. You know, I can't... Uh, maybe it's because I haven't seen them in a while. I can't think about any flaws, like glaring flaws of these movies. <gasps> Yo, we forgot about Shrek. Nah, they made a fourth one. They did? Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen that. And yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to talk about... We'll talk about Shrek in the franchise this one. Dang, uh, they they had to make that fourth one. I, I don't know. I didn't hate the fourth one as much as most people do. I didn't find it that obnoxious. It was all right. And they technically have Puss in Boots. Now, Puss in Boots, that was a fine movie. And that's part of the Fresh and Shrek franchise. I haven't seen that one. Uh, you should. Right, go check it out. Panda. What did you say about Kung Fu Panda? Kung Fu Panda, it's... When I first went into it, I didn't expect it to be as funny as it was and the action i gotta say they they did pretty well with the animated action it was something that that's another thing that going to the first movie didn't expect it and it kind of blew me away of course the second and third movies the second one is amazing i i mean i think they did better with the second one the third one i think once again, I don't think there's any huge dip in quality. I think the first and third ones are on the same, like, 8 out of 10 level. And then that second one is at, like, a 9 out of 10. I think these are all, all pretty good movies. I don't have a strong emotional connection with them. Uh, I never oh. I never got super into the movies. They're all just – they're all some good movies. They were never on my, like, favorite movies list as a kid, though. Yo, I guess I just have some crazy, like, deep nostalgia right now. I was thinking about the sword I had. It was Kung Fu Panda sword. And then I was, I was just like, dang, bro. You know, you know like, there's, there's memories that you don't even remember. And then, like, it depends on the situation. And it's, you just awaken this for you. Know I mean? All right, Billy. Uh, where, would you, where would you put the Kung Fu Panda trilogy? Man, this is a childhood movie. So definitely nostalgia here. I, I love it. I love the... Storyline, I love how the character, everyone around him doesn't like him. Well, not everyone, but because Uguay, but Uguay does leave, but everyone grows on him. It kind of reminds me of Naruto. Um, <laughs> I don't have anything bad. I don't have, no, it's true. I don't have anything bad to say about it. Um, should I rank it right now? Yeah, go ahead. All right. I'm gonna put it really, really good. All right. I'll go. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead, Nebby. You'll, you'll, you'll get that final punch. Right. I, I'm gonna. Of course, I, I really don't have any complaints about the movies, but just looking at like what I have, it really, really good, and then what I have, it pretty good. I think that it, it, it aligns more with pretty good, just to me. It doesn't. I never got really connected to these movies. Now, yeah. Nebby, throw your, <laughs> throw your gloves into the ring. I got to say, it's legendary. <laughs> this is silly legendary, no cap. No cap. Uh, so, let's see. Let's jump around. Have any of you actually, I, <laughs> I'll keep asking this. Have any of you is seen the wrong? new Planet of the Apes ones? Yeah, I haven't seen any no. of them. You haven't seen any of them? No. Oh, Nebby, you seen them? Yeah, I've seen like one or two, maybe. Damn. But I'm, uh, 
I never understood like which one I was watching because the names are so confusing. It's like the Planet of the Apes and then the Planet of the Yo, of the yeah, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I know War uh, for War is the last one. The one in the middle is Dawn. Rise, Dawn, War. I think those are pretty good titles that uh they're good chronologically. Rise oh. the Dawn, like the morning, the dawn. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have war. These are oh, all right. like super intense movies like i really like the original planet of the apes one of the have any of you seen them what was it with the the actor for was it not tom holland but i'm a, the yeah. actor for jacob malfoy he was in the first one nah no i'm not talking about like the first one i'm talking about like the ones in the 60s oh no no those that I wouldn't actually, I feel like that's one of the movies from the 60s that you can go back to and it holds up both visually, story-wise, the twist at the end, if you don't know it at this point, just don't search it up because it will be a great twist once you see it. The original ones are super good and this is one of the franchises where they tried to reboot it with uh, Planet of the Apes 2001, which everybody hates, but I, I like, I, I really like the first, the one with Mark Wahlberg. And then they... Pulled it up. They announced this one. Everybody was skeptical, and then they blew them away. This, I'm pretty sure, it was planned. All three movies are <laughs> extremely intense. The characters are some of the greatest of the past decade. Like uh, Caesar, Caesar's character arc. When you talk about consistency and actually uh, completing a character arc in its entirety, Caesar is at the top of that. Uh, the visuals are this is this is VFX. This is CGI at its best. Uh, looking at the MCU movies, they can get a bit too heavy with CGI, and it begins to dwindle the effects of actually looking at the movie. But when it comes to Planet of the Apes, it looks so real, and you don't realize that it's CGI half the time. Hey, compared to Curious George. <laughs> uh, I feel like. I connected more with Caesar than I did with Curious George, and that's that's a pretty big claim right there. I mean, that's Curious George. I mean, I Caesar, I think, is a better character than Curious George, and I don't think I can give this movie any higher praise than that. Like, what I remember about this movie is like how how insane like these monkeys were. Like I remember the monkeys were killing each other, and then these monkeys were like. I remember this. I don't remember this happening in the movie, but I remember the trailer where the monkeys were riding the horses, like AK 47s going crazy, and I was like, dang, that's just. Uh, yeah, like, like, this is like <laughs> a crazy intense movie. Yeah, like, I, I want to see this. I, I really don't remember much at all. I want to watch yeah, this, this. This is another one where you can choose one day, and if you go exclude that day just for a Planet of the Apes uh, binge you wouldn't be disappointed at them. You wouldn't feel like you wasted a day. You would feel like you accomplished something just by watching the apes rise into power. You would be like, oh, I'm an ape now. And I am, <laughs> or I am now, I am Caesar. And I oh. am the new king of the apes. Is all it right. like, are, are these movies independent though? Like, no, they're all one, this is one universe. These are all one singular story that they are uh, taking through all of the movies. Okay. Um... All right, uh, Billy, do you have anything to say? Um, so I'm not com I'm not completely unfamiliar with these movies. I remember I don't remember which one, but like it was playing on TV. Somebody watching it. I sat down for like 20 minutes and saw it. I liked it, and from what you said, it sounds good. So I'm gonna give it pretty good. Hey, Nebby. I'm say really, really good. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say the same. Really, really good. Yeah. And now, I think some of the movies I like a lot. Let's go to Indiana Jones, which have neither of you seen the Indiana Jones this one now? No, I haven't seen. Sorry, it. Yeah, well. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm like probably gonna. Um. These are more adventure. These are probably oh. these are pure adventure. These are movies that the first all of them are 
equal level. And I, I'll rarely say this, but all of these movies are just equal amazing level good. Uh, of course, these are some iconic movies. When you, but I don't know, you you know, half the time you know the plot when it comes into uh, an adventure movie. But even after the movie being made in the 80s and going into the movies in like 2010, 2015, 14, I was still astonished with the plot. The plot still somehow surprised me so many times. The first one, the second one, the second one is the reason why there's a PG-13 rating. Because uh, you have like you have this guy, Indiana Jones, pulling out somebody's heart at one point, And then everybody began to get pissed off because it was still a PG rating and people that were like 10 could go and see it. Uh, so they had to implement that PG-13. The third one, the usually, when you think about the introduction of a father into a story, more often than not, that's like a sign that there's nowhere to go. However, in Indiana Jones, when the the introduction of his father and then the story with his father and how his father influenced his childhood and how he influenced where he's at now, it's it works perfectly with his story. Uh, these are all movies that you would think that they're all one continuous story, but they're not really. They're all a part of the same universe when you think about it, but they're all like isolated situations that don't refer back to the previous movies. And I think that has that that does a lot for them. And before I go on too much, I'm going to go ahead and say, despite everything that I've said, the hype for these movies, similar to Back to the Future, is going to keep me from going into legendary because I understand the so, the societal impacts, but I also have to keep into into mind the impact that it had on me. I'm just going to go with really, really good for the Indiana Jones movies. Now, what are you guys' expectations going into the Indiana Jones? Um, first, um, I'd like to ask you, is it like, is it anything like National Treasure? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Are there three National yeah. Treasure movies or two? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just realized that too. Yeah, you know, every time that I thought of National Treasure, I swear there were three movies. But then a few weeks ago, I remember I saw on TV, they were like, oh, they're talking about a National Treasure 3. And I was like, hold up. I swear there was already a third one. But apparently there's only two. Oh, okay. Uh, this is, I wouldn't say it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't compare the two. National Treasure is more of like a, it's not a spoof. It's, it's a, would you, would you call it a comedy? I don't know. I like Nicolas Cage in it, but it feels like at times it gets comedic and it gets a bit absurd in the story and like what they, what they decide to do. But I would say that this is better. Indiana Jones is definitely better than National Treasure, even though I I love National Treasure. And I would, if they make a third one, I'm gonna be first day. I'm gonna be sitting in them seats watching National Treasure three. But I'll definitely say they're different. Indiana Jones, Billy, expectations. Um, I'm gonna put it really, really good. Nebby, you know. About this movie, I always like heard about it. You know, it's like it's really talked about, and I always thought it was like a cliche. You know, going into a cave, Bruh, nah, looking at the golden tents. Nothing like but, that. But yeah, like I said, yeah, the story is way better. And if the story is way better, like that, you know, I do like it. I like the story, so I'm gonna have to. I expect it to be. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep my my expectations reasonable. I'm gonna say pretty good. I want to say really, really good, but I just don't know. I mean. uh, ooh, let's jump over to ooh, these. Everything left is pretty good at this point. Hangover, the Hangover trilogy. Yeah, Billy, I want to go ahead and let you talk about these. Yo, this movie, uh, I think it has one of the best plots I ever seen. Like the way it starts out, they go to a party. Get so drunk, blackout. Next day, don't know what the heck happened. <laughs> will have any idea. Yo. They got tattoos. Teeth are missing. <laughs> Friend is missing. Like, yo, it's so funny. It's and then a they random go, tiger. Yeah, and then a tiger. <laughs> and then Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Yo, and this is all the first movie. We haven't even talked about the other two yet. 
Yes. There's, you know, Billy, now that I'm thinking about it, don't these count as detective mystery movies when you think about it? Probably, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, go Let's ahead. Find Billy. a friend in a, cool, uh, in a ice uh, ice machine, that's what it was. Like, okay, what the Joe. Yo, the naked Asian. The Asian, the Asian. <laughs> See, the Asian, I didn't Yo. think it was going to be brought back over and over, but oh, yeah. doing that, like, made these movies so so oh, much better. Nevi, Nevi, have you seen yeah. the movies? I know you I haven't seen them, right? Yo, uh, Ben, Ben from Community, Ben Chang? Yeah. Yes, yeah. the naked Asian man. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's his character. That guy is hilarious. And, uh, yo. Don't they have a podcast now? Oh, yeah, the darkest timeline. Yeah. Okay, but it's just... Since, uh-huh, go ahead. Yeah, just, like, the way it starts out, and then they have to go backwards and figure out what happened. And even uh, even while going back, it's still an adventure for them. I don't know. It's just... I, I love the plot. And uh, this is one of the you know, funniest no, movies I've ever seen. You know, Billy, now going back... I went. I went back and watched it two months ago. Knowing the ending, as I just continued to watch through the entire movie, I, it was just in the back of my mind. Like it would. It's that easy for them to find this guy, but they're yeah. going through all this. It made it even funnier. You know, as you say that the first movie, I think I agree. It's one of the better comedies of ever <laughs> in the past decade. Definitely, it's really unique too. And the plot, you remember how I said I really got into stoner movies like four or five years ago? Yeah. <laughs> the Hangover is, it's not a, a, a technical stoner movie, but I count it as one. It's, it just has that vibe to it. Definitely, I got to say, after all that stuff I remember from the first one, the second and third ones, all I remember it for right now is that they went to Bangkok one of the times because yeah. I just remember the name Bangkok. I know yeah. they bring back they bring back the naked Asian man. I don't remember anything beyond that. How does that a movie like this have like sequels though? You know what I mean? This have like multiple blackouts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I gotta say the movies. Thinking of it about them from a critical standpoint, they get stale because it's just bringing back the same exact plot over and over again. Of course, they're still funny, and the comedy definitely still hits at at various points. But the story, and then the, of course, they have a consistency when you think about it, but the story itself and the plots themselves, they don't have a, a fluid emotion throughout all three of them. Uh, Nebby, I'm going to go ahead. Since you're the only one that hasn't seen them, what, what do you expect from them as of right now? Um, from the, I mean, you know, I think the first movie, I really like it. But this is a trilogy and a repetitive trilogy. I don't really know about that, you know what I mean? I got to look at the whole spectrum, but I do think that it would be funny to watch. So I'm going to say it would be pretty good. Ooh, you're pretty good. Has now run over to make a second level. Oh, John. Billy, I'll let you go last. I'll go ahead and say that I put this as really, really good. Or, mm, you know, I'm gonna sound stupid because I just, I just, just said I was put these are really, really good. I'm gonna put these are not really. Despite, oh, I, hold on. I, I love the first one, but I was just looking and I saw the Austin Powers trilogy, and I have the same complaints I have about Austin Powers with the Hangover trilogy, but I, I gotta say they're both equal right there when I think about it as a trilogy. Oh, dang. Billy. Um, I was going to put it really, really good, but Nebu, you, you did say that this is for trilogies, and I guess the, the last two didn't stand out as much as the first one. Um, so I'm putting it pretty good. All right, so let's... Ah. Toy Story. I know there's a fourth... I know I know there's a fourth one and the fourth one was really oh, good. Yeah. It was a great movie. But when I think about Toy Story and the ending of Toy Story, I think about that third movie 
and the ending of the third movie where uh, Andy has to give away all his toys. Oh. That was an yeah. emotional ass scene. And I don't know. I didn't advocate for the fourth one. They still did a great job with it. I count these three movies as the Toy Story trilogy, excluding the fourth one. The fourth one is a great follow-up. The first three, you get to see so many different consistent character arcs. When you think about all the toys, you think about Buzz, you think about the when you think about the the character of Andy himself. There's just amazing cons- consistency. And you know, when I I remember I said a few podcasts ago, one of the movies that I had in Ethiopia was Avengers Downloaded. But then uh, we had bought this laptop uh, for, for my cousin, right? And then I just opened up the disc player and Toy Story 3 was sitting right there for some reason. It was just there. It was a free Toy Story 3 disc. And I think I watched Toy Story 3 like four or five times. And Was it in the modern What would you say? Was it in the modern year? No, it was in English. We bought it from America. Oh. And Toy Story 3 was just sitting there. Uh, I think it was a, a refurbished laptop. And it was it's the last owner just left it there. It was, it stood up every time. I don't think these movies get any more. I actually think these movies get better and better. Toy Story 3 is definitely my favorite. When you think about uh, Toy Story, he's one of the best villains. He's one of the most compelling villains that I have ever seen in a kid's story. I mean, his uh, backstory. The, the teddy bear? Uh, Fuzzo? Fuzzy? What's his name? But, ooh, I forgot about Mr. Potato Head, Mrs. Potato Yo, there are so many great characters in Toy Story. Uh, oh, Ned Beatty? I swear his name was like Fuzzo. Hey, apparently it's Ned Beatty. Like. That's <laughs> what his name. <laughs> Look up Toy Story <laughs> 3 characters. <laughs> Yeah, yo, but aren't teddy bears like weird, weird? Just in general, like a small stuffy bear. Like, why do we have those? What? Is this oh, it, it was voiced by Ned Lotso Huggin. His name is Lotso. Lotso. That's where I got fuzzed off. Ned BD is the guy that voices him. Lotso. Oh, okay. Name. That makes sense. All right. All right. But, yo, for I'm Toy Story, though, I got, really, I got one really big complaint, which is I, I hate the animation they have for humans. Like, that actually ruined the whole movie for me. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. <laughs> Dude, yeah, it's a Toy Story. Who cares about the humans? It's just like I don't know, man. The way they do them up, like especially that one, like villain human. Oh, like, in the first favorite? in the first movie, yo. But that was the point when it came to that one. I think they meant to draw him like that. They wanted you oh, to I, hate I, that I kid. Look at the. I didn't want to look at the movie. You know, I want to stop watching because I just don't want to see that no more. You know what I mean? No, I mean. Really, What's the uh-huh. humans were weird like? No, Live no, 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 I would hate that. And then, and no. this one, that would be fine. Nebby, you are the reason that there are new <laughs> Lion Kings. You are oh, the target. Yeah, I, I don't like that. I, I don't like that. You, you are the reason for this. I swear, Disney is going to pull up here and then they're going to be like, oh, we're going to make a new live action Toy Story and everybody's going to hate it. And I'm going to bring this clip up and I'm going to blame you. Uh, I mean, <laughs> well, we're going to try this though. Toy Story, you know, I think it was I. I never really liked it. Toy Story is nostalgia cool. at its best. There's no nothing that brings up nostalgia to me as, as Toy Story does. Maybe the Spider-Man movie trilogy. Maybe because that's another one that I saw at a really young age. And anytime I see it, it's nostalgia. But Toy yeah, Story man. is probably the epitome of Toy that. St- Go ahead, dude. Toy Story, like, before I watched it, like, a long time ago probably early middle school. I re- I didn't I didn't know like w- if I would like it. I thought I wasn't going to like it. Uh but yo man, this these yeah. movies fine. Yo, and they they have something for everybody. They genuinely have nice understandable stories that connect with both kids and that can c- truly connect with adults. So my parents like these movies too. These are movies that that transcend age, even though their target audience is young kids with like five or six. I can go back and watch this movie right now, and I'll have that nostalgia. Yet I'll get I'll get some sort of message from the movie. Dang. I don't know. About, I don't know. Maybe I just didn't. I don't know. Maybe I, I, I watched these movies when I was young too, and I 
that's when I sort of like it the most, but I mean, I do like it, though. I'm not going to lie. I remember, especially one of the movies, I remember liking it, but I also remember not liking it. You know what I mean? I remember both. Okay, Nevi, let's go ahead. I want you to vote first. So I, I would have to say it's in between quite, was it quite good? What was it again? Um, pretty good. Pretty good. And not really. So I'm just going to have to settle on uh, not really. That's how I feel right now. But I, I can see it going up to quite good. I mean, really, really good. Not really good, but pretty good. Okay. Billy? I'm, I'm going to put it really, really good. Oh, shoot. That's crazy. Yo, I'm putting this a legendary. <laughs> what? These are, these are legendary. These are movies wow. that have shaped who I am. These are legendary movies. Hey. I All understand right. that. Shaped how you are, you gotta, you gotta do it. You, you shaped me. And that's the greatest movie of all time. So. Yo. All right. Let's jump over to Madagascar. Let's, let's close out the animations. Yeah, yeah. Who, who yeah, Billy Star Wars, that's fine. Yeah, let's go ahead. <laughs> Billy, Madagascar. <laughs> this is nostalgia for me. I, I watched this since I was a kid in Africa. Uh, I think uh, Madagascar... This, this is a Disney movie, right? I think so. It's either Disney or DreamWorks. Let me see. Oh, so Disney doesn't own DreamWorks? I don't think so. Because I know Sh- well, is Shrek... Like... Is, okay, let's, let's see. Panda is DreamWorks too, right? The following year, DreamWorks sent. Oh shoot! Disney just bought DreamWorks like three years ago. Disney is like right. taking over everything, like that. Yeah, it's too big, man. But they, big. one day, I swear they're gonna take over YouTube, and it's just gonna be over for everybody. I was. Wouldn't that be about Google that. though? Oh shoot. Yeah, man! Yeah, yeah, they're just gonna take Google all over, over everything. They're just gonna. T- if Disney takes Google, <laughs> they're it's over with. We're all a part of Disney as of then. <laughs> but Google but, is bigger than Disney, I think. So Google but, will take Disney. Madagascar is uh, one of my favorite animated movies. I put it top ten for animated movies. Mm-hmm. I'd agree. Watched. I rewatched the fur the second one. The second one is definitely my favorite. Escape to Africa. Uh, I watched it yesterday. I think I put it on in the background, just like as. Uh, we we're just sitting there as a family. Just put it on, and it still holds up as a really funny movie. Chris Rock is in this movie. Who who else? Just the voice actors. I couldn't think yeah. of anybody playing these voices. Having yeah. Chris Rock as the uh, what's his name? The zebra. The dumb zebra. The zebra. The zebra. The zebra. Uh. Who who is it? I, I got to know the who, who plays the, David Schwimmer as the lion. I oh, think. really? Or is it? No, Ben Stiller is the lion. David Schwimmer is the the giraffe. Yeah. The giraffe as David Schwimmer. Who, there's literally nobody Yo. else that can do it better. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> now, Billy, when you think about it, the only person that would that you could have switched out is the hippo. You could have had Jennifer Aniston as the hippo, and that would have just done it perfectly. But just having David Schumer as the giraffe was perfect. The voice actors, imagine anybody else being that zebra except for Chris Rock. That'd no, I work. couldn't see that. Well, it doesn't work. It, like, I yeah. wouldn't say Eddie Murphy, but Eddie Murphy oh, is yeah. just too good with the donkey from Shrek. Exactly. <laughs> it's crazy how they play those characters. Yeah. yeah. Man, the voice acting is amazing. The stories... I don't know. As a kid, I, I brought it up already, just the absurdity of this story. And then just seeing, I don't know, anytime I see non-humans talking, it just yeah. connects with me for some reason. What's also funny is, like, the penguins are fight too. They got to fight. Oh, fight. yo, yeah, the, penguins, the penguins. The penguins. The penguins. Yo, the penguins are, like, a big part of this movie. <laughs> yo, the King Julian. Oh, yeah. that. Who, who voices him? I feel like there's going to be somebody iconic voice in this guy. 
<laughs> oh, that's, that's a, a button dude from uh, Borat. Oh, that's the dude from the dictator on Borat. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, it's, it's that too. There's literally nobody else that can do these voices. All right, One thing so, about Madagascar that I love was yeah. like the video game. I used to play like on Xbox 360, and it was so far like that really enveloped me in Madagascar. It wasn't even the movies that really connected me with. Uh, I don't know how I got the video game, mm-hmm. but it was it was far. Yeah, she get it one day. It's still be fair to play. I'll start off with putting Madagascar at really, really good. Oh. Not legendary, but I mean, I, I'm tempted to put it there. But I was just comparing Toy Story and Madagascar, and I just feel like Toy Story has more of a, it had more of an impact on me, and definitely more of an impact on society uh, than Madagascar. Yeah, I, I'd also say really, really good. Mm-hmm. What about you, Billy? Billy? This movie's a great family movie, so I'm going to have to put it at really, really good. Really, really good? Yeah. 